Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Dark Cloud Enhanced Edition. It's been a while, but it's good to be back. And if you're jumping into the series for the first time, well, Enhanced Edition basically takes the original version of Dark Cloud and alters it in many ways for a potentially more balanced experience and also just a more unique experience, something that's a bit different from the vanilla adventure, uh, including things like side quests and the like. Uh, if you want to know more, uh, go check out the link in the description down below to go check out the mod. Uh, regardless, I hope you're all doing well. And let's take a look at what we have currently in our inventory before moving on. Let's go ahead and equip a pocket here. Uh, and we just finished up Matataki Village, or pff, not Matataki, we need to go to Matataki Village, we just finished up Narun Village. Uh, so we're going to try and prepare ourselves uh, for the adventure to Matataki. Now we do have two tram oil to go through, uh, we don't have to spend these right now. Um, and I'm not really sure what's the best floors to use the tram oil on. Um, one thing I will say though, is we don't have access to a bandit slinger for Miss Xiao here. So unfortunately, she's just gonna have to try and level this thing up to plus five, and we're gonna see what we can do uh, with improving the quality uh, of our tools, of our weapons, of the trade. Um, what may be a good option here is to actually sell two of our bone rapiers just to open up some extra inventory space on tone. Um, and we're just gonna maybe uh, slowly begin to build up this base lard here. So right now we have a very powerful, well, a decent sphere, not very powerful. A very powerful is kind of going a bit overboard there, but um, we have a base lard plus five sphere, which originally had a dagger. So what dagger, base lard, and now here it is. Um, and this is gonna be our uh, quote unquote ultimate weapon, right? Our ultimate sphere. Um, and what that means is essentially we're gonna try and have every single type of positive trait added on to the base lard. And the biggest issue with doing this, of course, is some of the items that we're gonna get, um, or some of the upgrades that we're gonna make to this thing uh, are gonna be uh, less lesser. Like the weapons that we're gonna put it into to get the upgrade are gonna be a bit lesser. So what we might end up having to do is uh, apply those spheres from those like like a bandit slinger for example is not very powerful we might have to apply it to uh, another weapon such as this buster sword and then add this buster sword and sphere together and and like, combine those together i don't know if that makes any sense it'll make sense as we go along but regardless the idea is we don't want to lose too much when we're upgrading our gear and getting the better traits uh, so we can just have one sphere floating amongst everyone that's relatively powerful um, it will take a little bit of extra EXP to do so, but I think in the end we're going to have something that's pretty uh, well designed here. So, actually, I think what we're just going to do here, we're going to ignore the Buster Sword plus one for now. And um, we may even just go all the way on to Shao for the majority of Matataki Village. Uh, but at the end of the day here, we're just going to go run over to good old Odd Gaffer. And I also noticed that we don't have uh, any sort of antidotes, so let's just go ahead. We have 190 bucks. I think we also have a bully on here. Yeah, there we go. Throw that into our soup. Uh, our soup being money here. Wow, only 20 bucks for repair powder. That ain't bad. And we have a decent amount at the moment. Um, we're gonna grab one antidote just to be safe here. Um, and apparently my mouse is hovering over something. You couldn't see that there, but it was like, <laughs> it was like hovering over something that said Steam IO. And I'm like, interesting. Uh, regardless though, uh, what do we have here? We have a decent amount of Dran's feathers. We're doing okay on bread for now. Um, and yeah, we got our antidotes, so let's try and sell, <laughs> try, uh, it's like we have to haggle this away. Uh, let's go to our weapons here. So we're going to sell two of our bone rapiers. We don't need all of them. Um, and also we need to just make space for, uh, more potential weapons. Also like having two sham shears, probably not necessary. So we're just going to get a little bit of extra credit here. So we're going to go two bone rapiers and we're going to get this extra sham shear uh, out of here as well. Because there's just no reason to have it. And hopefully there was no um, gems on there as well. Uh, and then we might want to just organize these in a way uh, of how we want to upgrade everything, right? So right now we have obviously the Buster Sword is a fantastic weapon. Uh, the Sax, of course, also a fantastic weapon. And we can take our time to really upgrade these items. We also don't need this extra base lard. So not particularly a great weapon. And we can even base it off the price, right? So actually even the Gladius might be a good weapon to uh, to do next. 
just because it's $217. The sax is worth quite a lot, um, and I'd have to equip a different tool here to really uh, understand the price of the Buster Sword compared to the sax. I think the sax might actually be better uh, than the Buster Sword here. So let's just put the Buster Sword there, and then we have the sax, and then we'll kind of go in this order uh, just to get the benefits of each of these types of weapons. And I don't think this Bone Rapier has, like, brittle or anything like that. Uh, and hopefully we get those hidden traits as well as we go along here. Um, so, yeah, there we go. Hopefully uh, we're following along. Hopefully, hopefully we're all living the dream. Um, let's just say goodbye to the mayor. I actually recently started a, uh, a fun little playthrough on the PS5 just for fun. Uh, and I was looking at the hello dialogue, and apparently we missed a ton of extra dialogue in our original playthrough of, uh, of Dark Cloud. Oh, there's a gourd here. Nice. Um, so... I want to try and make sure we get all of the hello dialogue kind of exhausted as we go along here. Maybe not necessarily in the Rune Village, um, and I don't think we'll get any extra dialogue here, uh, just talking to uh, Old Man Mayor. Yeah, he's just, he's just always going to be one note, but a lot of the NPCs in the game actually have like five, six hello uh, rotation dialogue. Like it just kind of loops around. Which I had no idea. Like, if we go over to... Oh, God. Okay. Claude was here for a second, and then he teleported into another realm. Oh, God! Claude, what has happened? Claude, are you okay? <laughs> How does this happen? Bridge is definitely not buggy. All right. I hear that drought is... I, I don't even know how... To, how does... Uh, how does... Uh, how does he talk again? I hear that Drawn is back to his old self. I, am I glad to hear that? How about throwing a party to celebrate? Oh, uh, what? Interesting. See, okay, but if I go to, if I go to Macho, because he had, like, tons of dialogue in the, in the, in the OG, in Vanilla. Like, there he is. I, I know because I talked to him specifically. So this might not be for all characters. It might be like some characters have tons of hello dialogue. All right. Good, the village is alive again. And there's still monsters in the cave. This is great. Interesting. So if the village is done, perhaps the, uh, the dialogue and everything is like more limited. But as you're going throughout the game, like a new game... Uh, there's like tons of extra dialogue. Uh, and also this mod will have dialogue as well. On top of it. That's crazy. I'm glad the village has been restored, Tone. We can hang out together again. Uh, I'm, I'm leaving, baby. I'm out of here. Oh, God. Wait until she finds out. You have any side quests, by the way? Did you buy bombs from Gaffer's shop? Please be careful, Tone. I just want you to come home safely. That's not a side quest? That's hilarious, though. How's the new pouch? Is it good? It's 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 something. So that's why Dad was in a good mood. Oh yeah, because of the uh, the pond. All right, all right, all right. I think we're good. I think we're good. Uh, I think that's like my catchphrase now. I think we're good. Um, I I still wish that we could put all these trans feathers into the uh, the active time hot bar. We have currently five water. Plus Uno Gord. I might give it to Tone. I mean, Tone is your OG, right? Like, he deserves to have the most. Because he's, at the end of the game, he's going to be your most powerful character next to, like, say, an Osmond. But, alas, let us go to Matataki Village. We did it. Eight, no, nine minutes into the video. Victory is mine. Uh, also, hopefully the audio quality is good. I've, I've done a few things to, to change it up. There was some crosstalk going on between some of my wires. Uh, apparently, and I had no idea. I couldn't even realize it. Uh, there were so many issues I was running into. I thought it was a hardware issue, but apparently it was a cable issue. Uh, I've also installed some NVIDIA things uh, as well to, to hopefully help the Echo. It doesn't do an amazing job to get rid of Echo, but it does something, right? Lord Goro. The goat of the game. The guy that will, no doubt, defeat the Dark Lord himself. Uh, yeah, I guess we just, we'll just go right on in. I don't think there's any treasures for us to go find. Um, I think the fish are in the little river, though. Uh, what's not dried up? Oh, shoot. Okay, you know what? Let's, let's save this. Here we go. 
Uh, I'm going to go to slot two. And ignore the... Uh, no, no. Is it slot two? Maybe it's slot one. Ignore the extra save files here. These are me doing a test recording and uh, getting half, half an hour in, only to realize that uh, certain things went horribly wrong. So <laughs> that was last week. And I was like, God damn it. And then I just I got so fed up with it. I just I was like, I'm not recording for another week. Uh, anyway, here we go. Let's hopefully not get murdered. My good man. You can't lie to me. That face of yours is a villain's face. Get ready. The hurt's coming. I don't like it. I don't like it. Well, at least I got two wrong. God damn it. All right, I'll BRB. Oh, wow, and we're back. We're here. We're ready to go. I do love the ability to just kind of back out at any time. Like, to just reset the game. The soft reset is so nice. Uh, when you don't have access to, like, a safe state. No! Are you kidding me? <laughs> it's the last one, dude. <laughs> It was the last one. Oh my gosh. BRB, BRB. It's -a me. I'm back. It's me. Are you ready? Are you ready to get murdered? Are you ready for this? Because I'm not. I'm not. I'm not ready. <laughs> I'm not ready. <laughs> Come on. Oh, I just want to. The worst one yet. Okay, so I was looking at the uh, reward for this thing just to see if this is worth it. It kind of is. You get a sapphire, which is a pretty reasonable uh, reward. I mean, it's not amazing. It's not like an all be all, right? It's not like you can't just get them in the back rooms, but it's the principle of the matter. It's the principle, damn it. We gotta do this. Come on. Come on. Whoa! You know. I don't give a shit anymore. If you guys get it, you get it. I don't care anymore. <laughs> I don't give a shit. I say you're kind of strong. I mean, you know. What can I say? I'm pretty strong, man. I, I think you're out. <laughs> Stomach's killing you. Goodbye. Goro-chan. Goro. Goro. What a weirdo. That man is going to destroy the whole world. That maniac. All right, now we got the hero's earrings, which means now we'll be able to talk to the tree. The greatest. I really enjoyed voicing the tree in our other playthrough. That was a lot of fun. Hello, Toad. I lost my hunter's earrings. Have you seen them? You can understand the forest fairies when you wear them. I use them to talk to Trent. I don't really need to, though. I've already mastered their language. Oh, I wonder if Trent is still all dried up. You want to see Trent? Check it out at the huge hole deep in the village. <gasps> Pocketo. That's exactly why I came up here, my friend. You and me, girl, we're gonna do great things together. We're gonna do great things together. I mean, hopefully. I don't know. Also, does anyone know, like, what, what's the most efficient way to try and get your hands on, like, a bandit slingshot? Is it just pure luck? Are we just, like, in a weird state right now where Tone just gets all the weapons? Like, we got one weapon for, <laughs> for poor Oshao. And then Tone is just rocking the whole universe with infinite money. I can't, I can't believe it. I can't believe you've done this. Absolute nah. All right, away we go. Fast travel. That's one thing I think Dark Cloud 1 does things quite interestingly with is uh, the 
actual design of the zones feels rather unique instead of like a big box. It's like Monotaki Village feels like a horseshoe. But then the next village is also just a big box. So I don't know. Darun Village is a big box. What else is just a big box? I can't actually tell anymore. Speaking of boxes, hello! It's me! Did you know that the trench is dried up? And if you go into the gate of the Matataki village, you can undry him with rivers! Bye! We did it. We, did, we figured it out. The fairy tr uh, tree trent is dried up. <laughs> water could possibly revive it. Possibly! Get your bottle of water. It's like it's always sunny where they're in the water park and then they go down the slide that's not active yet and Charlie just puts a bottle of water down the slide and tells Frank, who is shirtless, to go down the slide and Frank goes down the slide. <laughs> you can only imagine just how dry that slide was. Drier than Trent. Uh, <laughs> it was like a bullet slide too. Ooh, that was good. That was a good video. You search it up if you haven't seen it already. It's hilarious. Love that show. Uh, anyway, to the Wise Owl Forest. The only one wise in this forest is the owl. He's the one that wins every time. He even gets his own shop. I bet it's all the same owl. That's all it is. I bet there's only one owl. Okay, so here's the plan. We're going to customize the bone rapier, and we're going to not make it break. That's also a key roll, right? So we have 30 damage, which is not great, um, but we're going to make do with what we got. Currently using ice. We got our pointy chestnut roasted. Okay, sorry. Anyway, uh, yeah, we're going to we're gonna just try and level this thing up because in theory, these lesser weapons, these bone rapiers and everything like that, they're going to take less EXP anyway to level up. Uh, so we'll just kind of tiptoe our way, oh god, into Murderville, apparently. That's also a good show. Have you, ever, have you ever seen Murderville? Let me just tell you, Murderville is absolutely hilarious. It's essentially everyone's in on it, and everyone is, like, making a proper production uh, of a show. It's a murder investigation show. And then they hire in an, or uh, hire. They, they bring on an actor that is not in on the script or anything like that. And they have to figure out who the, the, the murderer is. Uh, it's actually pretty fun to follow along. Uh, but once you figure the formula out, it's pretty easy to figure out uh, who the killer is. Uh, it's, it's, they, they make it kind of obvious for the audience. But they make it way less obvious for the actual person that's trying to figure it out. And I think that's kind of a key element there. But it's really entertaining if you ever get a chance it's on uh, the good old Netflix. Uh, regardless, though, here we are. I can't believe we're back in it. And I'm very happy to say that Matataki Village is not making my computer explode. Um, back in the day, you may know this or you may not. So I have lots of Dark Cloud content on the channel uh, before even the, the voice acted playthrough that uh, I'm still blown away with how well that playthrough went. It's easily my favorite playthrough on the channel. Um, and I had an absolute blast going through it. Uh, but there was a playthrough before that one, uh, which was emulated on this uh, same emulator here. Uh, albeit it was a much earlier version uh, of PCSX. I want to say that I'm just going to get robbed or mugged to death here, aren't I? Um, <laughs> God damn it. All right, hold on. Uh, luckily, I got that antidote. That was the exact reason why I got this antidote, because I knew this was going to happen. And we're also playing a melee character in a what I would arguably consider to be a dungeon that is very much designed for a ranged character. <laughs> There's so much ranged enemies in this in this map; it's kind of insane. Um, but yeah, I used to have an emulated playthrough of uh, Dark Cloud uh, many many years ago, back when I was a, a wee young lad doing wee young lad things like the streaming on YouTube. Madness. Absolute madness, um, all that, but uh, it did not run very well. Is the is the point I'm trying to make? Uh, I think this would have been, gosh, what it was a PCSX version 11, 10 maybe. Really, really, really long time ago. We're on 16, version 16. So the emulation has gotten just infinitely better. Um, 
Now, that being said, you do not need to emulate Dark Cloud to get it to, to run on modern systems. Um, you can simply just play Dark Cloud on your PlayStation 3, 4, 5, or if you have the original copy of Dark Cloud, you can just play that on your PlayStation 2, but obviously you don't get the nice benefits of an increased resolution. Um, albeit the frame rate, surprisingly so, is really, really, really solid. Like, it's, it's, it's really impressive, actually, just how good that is. Uh, also, I think someone's doing yard work outside, so I sure hope that's not getting picked up on the microphone, but who knows? I really don't care <laughs> at this point. The game audio is loud enough, though, for me to not really worry too much about it. But, uh, yeah, it's just kind of insane uh, how you know far the channel's come and just how fun it's been going through pretty much every game I've ever played on the channel. Like, all of them have felt like something that has been a major part of my life uh, and something that I can just bring out every now and again to relax. Uh, for example, just finished my time in college. Uh, well, that's not true. I finished my second semester in college, I should say. That There is still many more semesters to go and lots of co-op to go as well. So uh, I'm still stuck in. I'm still stuck in with the boys until 2025. But the, that's the goal. Get out of 2025 and find the, the gerb I need. Um, but I'm, I'm doing relatively well. But basically all of my time and effort into it. And uh, I'd say it's paying off. Uh, getting a solid GPA, which is great. Uh, the GPA is always very different depending on like where you are. So for the context of my college, uh, a 4.0 uh, grade point average, which is basically, if you don't know what that is, uh, might as well, might as well explain it. I don't know. Um, a basic grade point is you get a set amount per class. So the average typically is three grade points per class, but it could vary. Uh, and then you usually have one big class that's worth like four or five. Uh, so I had uh, like 22 credits this term. One of them was worth, uh, one of the courses was worth five. One was worth four. The rest were worth three. And then there was one that was worth a single, but I didn't really count in my opinion because it was like a pass fail uh, type scenario. Uh, let's see what we got here. He didn't want he didn't want the berry. Uh, and essentially, the way that my college works is a uh, 4.0 GPA, which in most cases a 4.0 is a 90%. In my college, it's 80%, and the highest GPA you can get is a 4.2, which would be above 90%. Um, which is kind of weird. I don't know why they they did it that way, but it sounds nicer on paper. What do you write? I got a 4.0, so... <laughs> and that's what I got, so I set up for that for term two and uh, got the 4.0, and it felt felt really good. Felt really, really good doing that. Um, also, yeah, I keep getting weird, like... Uh, you guys can't see it, but every time, uh, every now and again, I just get something highlighted in the back of the monitor. I'm like, why? So strange. Also, let's try not to break our sword, huh? We got some flea fleas already, but these guys aren't so bad. We could get one more hit in here. There we go. We gotta make sure we don't get hit with slow, because I don't think I have soap to deal with that, so. Okay, the goblins definitely seem to either be weak to um, to ice, or who knows what. Uh, we're definitely not going to combine this sense sphere just yet, because we could run into a floor where we need to use Xiao. Uh, but we can absolutely throw stuff in here. Uh, so I'd say just throw a couple undead, why not? And we're just gonna upgrade it, why not? And the reason we're throwing undead into the rapier is because, I mean, look at it. <laughs> look at it! Literally designed for the undead. Now, does it help us kill plants? Absolutely not. Madness. Insanity. Uh, also, we have a sapphire, or opal here. Uh, you know, it would be... Uh, it has anti-mage and anti-metal, which is interesting. Um, also... Uh, one thing that was weird, so I was going through, like I said, I was going through the original uh, Dark Cloud on PS5, or I guess whatever that version is. I guess it's the North American copy, because let's keep in mind there is the Japanese version of Dark Cloud, which is a little different. Not crazy different, but there's no combos or anything. Um, another, That's another Dark Cloud we need to play on the channel eventually. Uh... 
but uh, when I was talking about the hello system, so for example, in the vanilla version of the game, so uh, in the context of this, I had only done the first and second floor. No, I think it was just the first floor. Oh, you piece of poo-poo. Um, and then I got Komacho. I got him and I said hello to him like a dozen times. And he was cycling through a bunch of like tutorial messages, uh, trying to detail, you know, Wow, look at all the spheres in the bottom left here. Uh, trying to give you, like, hints on, on, on how to deal with certain enemies. Uh, but one of his tips was... Uh, oh, God. Oh, God. Let's not, let's not get murdered, please. Money stolen? Damn, he stole a lot of money, though. Holy crap. Um, yeah, one of his tips was to deal with the statues. The stone statues, specifically. Uh, that you should level up anti-metal to deal with the stone statues. So apparently those statues are not made of stone, but they're made of metal. And I have always assumed they were made of stone. That being said, it could be a translation error, but I don't think so because when it comes to programming dialogue, you can reference specific stats uh, or specific things that uh, are already translated for you. Um, so if the developer is, say, you know, coded the game in Japanese, which is very likely, um, then they probably would have just had him target uh, the, the stat of anti-whatever, right? Uh, uh, so in this case, it would have been anti-metal. So supposedly those statues are weak, in theory, to anti-metal. I, I haven't actually tested any of this stuff because it's just based off the dialogue, right? So who, who actually knows? Also, who really cares, other than me, uh, who loves to play really old video games that I just can't get enough of? But isn't that the case? Isn't that just life? Really? I don't know, there's something that's always satisfying about going back to Dark Cloud. It's it's back to an era of, you know, when video games were video games and not platforms to sell hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of, you know, what are essentially digital uh, <laughs> costumes and uh, buffs and all that good stuff. So, uh, how, how the times have changed. And uh, we are really in a bad spot here, considering we're losing four health per poison tick, which is not great. Uh, we will we will be paying for this in terms of the bread. Because I think four pieces of bread is worth one thing of antidote. And I guess, you know, we could just do this while we're running around. Well, that's very fortunate. So we'll be able to use a sundew here. Uh, and I don't think we have any mimics yet. You know, it just doesn't end, you know? Once you get the drip started, it just doesn't stop. It's like the faucet is permanently turned on to maximum. And, uh, and we're winning. We're winning, but only Tone's the winner. Which is so strange, man. Okay, let's just get in there. Like, that, that just confuses the absolute crap out of me, man. All right, here we go. Pointy chestnut, roasted. I, I can't. I can't. It's like burned into my into my veins. Gotta be really careful with those flea fleas. All right, let's not die. Uh, okay, look at the block in. Okay, ow. Good thing I healed there. I think I would have died. All right, so that's all the enemies. Let's grab. Oh shit! I did not mean to do that. I instinctively pressed square to try and do a drawn's feather. That obviously didn't do great. In my uh, attempt to essentially try and avoid the main menu as much as possible, I have simultaneously made it so I don't have like anti-poison on my hotbar, which is probably much better than what we have right now. All right, there you go. I wish there was an option to just give him all three at the same time. All these like, m this tiny little quality of life things I would do. I've looked into uh, a lot of, like, 
game design engines like RPG Maker and um, what was it Go Dot? Is it Go Dot engine? Gosh, I can't remember the name of it. Um, let's leave the den the dungeon. Leave the dungeon temporarily. Um, I can't remember the name of it, but there was like quite a few different engines I was looking into because I want to kind of make like a, a prototype Dark Cloud game of like Naroon Village and just kind of see how I could do like a live action combat scenario. And RPG Maker obviously doesn't really have the the best, uh, you know, options in mind uh, to allow for that. But uh, mainly that's just because it's designed to be a turn-based game. Uh, but there is absolutely ways to do live action with uh, something like uh, RPG Maker. But yeah, I I've seen a lot of cool ideas out there. Um, in terms of like a live action top down uh, combat design and I'd love to just like make a couple prototypes out there just to kind of come up with an idea of like what the ideal dark cloud game would be um, I've also looked at like Unreal Engine and I'm just like I just don't want to use it <laughs> don't know why I have such like a bias against Unreal Engine and like anyone that uses Unreal Engine is probably like dude it's the best engine it does everything um, and then I'm just there. I'm just hanging out and I'm like, no, man, I can't do it. I can't just, I can't just unreal everything. Um, not that I know much about anything when it comes to anything, uh, game engine wise. I know, I know how to program, um, like in Python, which is not a game engine editor at all. So not great. <laughs> uh, but it's, it's just definitely something that I can keep in the back of my mind, I guess. Uh, regardless here, let's sell these bobs. I do not care for those. I do not care for this. Uh, and I do not care for the whirlwind either. Or these nuts. Or these nuts. How much does this sell for? 300 bucks? That's not bad. Some more bomb nuts. Yeah, I just don't care. I just, I just don't eat them. I just don't eat them. Alright, so. Uh, let's get, you know what? We're gonna buy two antidotes this time. To avoid spending all of our bread. Uh, we currently have five pieces of bread because I think we had one in the hot bar and we don't have any antidote herbs. Uh, and if we check our prices here, $600 for the bastard sword, $717 for the sacks, $833 for the chopper. So look at us. So we're kind of going in order, right? Also, wait. Oh, we're leveling the, the bone rapier first. Oops. Oh, well, that's fine. We should have we should have leveled the, the gladius first and then the, the bone rapier. Oh, well. You know what? I'll allow it. I'll allow it. We might even sell the, the Gladius here. Or actually, maybe the Bone Rapier was... No, it was a bit more expensive, wasn't it? All right. All right, all right, all right. I think, I think we're looking good. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's back out here. Let's go to... Let's go back to Matataki. Uh, let's jump on into it. Fantastic. I made this coffee forever ago, and I always forget to drink it. It's the worst part. It's the worst part of making, like, a... A pour over and then you're like just the best coffee ever you take two sips and then you're like oh yeah i forgot i made a coffee it's still almost warm so i mean like we're, we're right there you know uh okay so let's take a look at our configuration and assembler we actually have a decent amount of items already uh which ain't too bad we could already hit a torch uh, I think almost every single one of these buildings has a sign. So we have the Baron, and we have the Ancient Baron. Matataki Village Mayor with Lion Mask has a beautiful mane. He sure does. He is the main character, after all. He's the leading man. I, did anyone else see the article going out there for Final Fantasy XII, where the uh, like the lead writer was like, Bosch von Ronsenberg uh, was never supposed to be the like lead character of Final Fantasy XII? And I'm like, yeah, because... It was supposed to be Balthier, I thought. And then, like, everyone's just losing their minds. Like, oh, this long-standing rumor that Bosch was the main character. Like, what? Since when was Bosch supposed to be the main character? I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be Balthier, but, you know, whatever. Who am I to say when they add Vaughn in the last minute? <laughs> Va I think Penella was uh, also, like, an added character as well. She's literally wearing, like, gear from Final Fantasy XI, which cracks me up. All right, let's go talk to a uh, lion man. Who are you? I haven't seen you around here. Where are you from? Oh, Naroon Village. No wonder you're wearing such plain clothes. A man should wear a good hood. 
Indeed. Shun, did you say your name was Chon? This village has got virtually nothing but the wise owl forest, but the air is clean, and it's a nice place to live. I hope you will enjoy your stay here. The word is that Trent keeps an extremely rare item, something any hunter would die to get. I wonder what kind of item that is. Do you know why we wear these masks? The masks indicate a hunter's rank. By wearing a mask of the strongest prey you killed, you are displaying your power. Ah, that reminds me. I was only 18 when I killed the monster called the King of the Beasts. I was so strong back then. <laughs> Have you met Mr. Mustache? <laughs> oh, I forgot that's the name of the owl. <laughs> The wise owl who's running the store here at Manataki Village. Don't get ripped off. I hear his prices are shit. Oh my, see, look at all this shit. This is all the dialogue we missed in the original playthrough. A great fairy called Trent lives in this village. The fairy dwells in the big tree in a large cave in the village. So I didn't even know that Trent is considered a fairy. That's amazing. He's because we have the fairy king, which I guess that makes sense why he knows about Trent. Because uh, we deal with the fairy king all the time. That's interesting, man. If you get the chance to see Trent, ask anything. He knows just about everything. However, you need to be a full-fledged hunter to understand what Trent says. Nuh-uh. I got the earrings. Therefore, I am full-fledged. Ah. Uh, don't ask silly questions like, who is the greatest in the village? Me or Trent? <laughs> this maid of mine tells it all, I think. <laughs> uh, wait, are you? did you just put yourself higher than Trent? You have this fairy god, like tree that's dried, dried up, sure. But like it's an ancient being from like before the planet, before humanity existed probably. And then you're just like, oh, but I killed a lion though. <laughs> I killed one lion. Therefore, I mean, Trent, did Trent kill a lion? I didn't think so. I didn't think so. Uh, okay, there you go. So that, oh, wow, so much dialogue when you're going through the village for the first time. Um, that's something I, I, I definitely want to try and make sure we, we capture as we go through here. Uh, and then obviously, how should we build the Narun Village? We've already done all that, and it's just to fill in some, some stuff. Uh, don't forget to put the roof on my house. Do we even have a roof? Uh, oh, we do. Sweet. That was fast. He didn't seem to have any loot inside of his place. Uh, I always like to check before we go on, but I didn't see, I didn't see anything on the first time through. Double check the rear. Nope, nothing. That was fast. That was, that was what, two floors? Have we already finished this house? Ah, it's you. Come closer. Take a seat. Ah, what shall we talk about today? As promised, I'll tell you anything. Uh, tell me about the village history. Oh. This is called the Matataki Village. How it came to be called that, well, mm, well let's see. I can't remember. I'm getting old. Okay, in that case, tell me about your youth. Me? I was one hell of a guy. For one thing, I won the post as village chief on my own. Probably not even Fudo would have been a match for me. Oh my god. Who the heck is Fudo? Oh, Fudo. Uh, he was the strongest hunter. Invincible was the word for him. No one could beat him until five years ago, that is. He just up and disappeared, leaving his only son. Uh, what about his son? Uh, he has a gentle nature. A bit chubby, but he has the instincts of a hunter. He is Fudo's son, after all. He could become a great hunter. 
but there's no hope with him being the way he is now. The day Fudo disappeared, his heart became covered with thick ice. How can we melt the ice in his heart? Oh, I'm quite eloquent, aren't I? <laughs> no. Oh, that's enough for now, eh? Then come by whenever you feel like. Here's a gift. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Oh, another gourd. The best. All right, now give me your sick loot, dog. What do you got? What do you got? What do you got? Gimme, give gimme, give gimme, gimme, gimme. Nothing? You bastard. Oh, don't have any side quests currently, but why? He likes the sound of water. Um, maybe he needs to be next to the, uh, the, the, the fountain or something. Not the fountain, but the, uh, the waterfall. <laughs> Waterfalls are now fountains. Have you met Mr. Mustache? Yes, we have. We have. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Amazing. Let's let's make sure he's in a good spot for now. Um, if he likes the sound of water because his hearing's going, uh, we might as well just move him right now. That's the one thing about Matataki, though, that kind of sucks is there's no road system. It feels a little bit more limiting because you're going to have this massive river that we're dealing with, but that's all right. I will manage. Uh, maybe we can do this. There we go. That works for me. And then if we go to our Georama analysis, uh, 9%. There we go. So I think he's a lot happier now. I think as uh, we go throughout the levels, throughout the dungeons, we should be seeing some sort of treasure chests like showing up every now and again, right? But we'll just double check with him that he's happy with this, even though he's only house here, so... I'd have to assume that, yes, he's totally ecstatic. Uh, I do not want to hear nothing. Thank you. There you go. You can hear the Great War of the, the Great Wall of the Waterfall. Amazing. We did it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think that is going to be the perfect time to wrap this episode up of Dark Cloud Enhanced Edition. I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, have been enjoying the series so far. Hopefully during the uh, next week because I got one whole week off school before the next uh, condensed term coming up. That's going to be fun. Uh, I'll be trying to get a decent amount of content out for you guys and rolling it out over the next few weeks. So other than that, I'm Akamane101 and I hope you all have a great one. Take it easy.